Hello, Sarah. Hello, it's great to be here. Wonderful to meet you. It's wonderful to meet you too. May you introduce yourself for a start? Yeah, my name is Sarah Hill and I work for Veterans United uh, and the Veterans United Network. Uh, our core business is home loans and we also do stories about veterans and military families, which is my job. Um, so I create content for the Veterans United Network. Great, and um, we saw that you 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 filled uh, you you filled the program uh, if I had glass. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your proposition to get glass? Yeah, um, basically, I wanted to provide an experience for terminally ill and aging veterans. So, unfortunately, here in the United States, we are losing our World War II veterans at a rate of about 600 a day nationwide. And a lot of these men and women are not able to physically travel in an airplane to see their memorials. So, what we are doing is using a combination of Hangouts and Google Glass in order to bring that experience to them. So, we do online tours of the World War II Memorial in Washington. In DC. We've even taken be uh, veterans to the beaches of Normandy in France uh, oh. for some of those veterans who served um, on Omaha Beach and they were able then to see their, their memorial uh, via hangouts and glass. So I was at the World War II Memorial in Washington DC. I was wearing glass. We opened up a hangout. We allowed in veterans from VA hospitals, from nursing homes and assisted living centers um, to come into that hangout and then see and interact with that memorial live in real time. So it gave these individuals a perspective of, of their memorial that they weren't otherwise able to see. Uh, that's a great project. That's why uh, you got uh, chosen by, uh, by the Glass uh, project uh, by the time. So quickly, what is your point of view on um, the wearable technology, the wearable computing? Is it mm -hmm. uh, for you the future of uh, technology? Yes, I, I do think it is definitely the future, and especially for journalists, reporters, content creators, people who are, who are gathering information and content, photos, videos quickly. What glass is, glass is to a smartphone what a microwave oven is to a regular oven um, in that you have the ability to share photos and videos more quickly to your social platforms. So for instance, on your smartphone, it takes you 14 clicks to awaken your smartphone, take a picture, and then share it on a social network. With glass, I have the ability to quickly and easily take a picture and then share it on Twitter, Facebook, or Google, Google Plus with a couple um, temple clicks, whereas on a smartphone, you have to do a bunch of clicks. So for journalists, for content creators, for reporters who are interested in quickly disseminating that information, glass is key because it allows you to do it more quickly. Also, um, the, the killer feature of this wearable device are Hangouts. Um, it is fueling what I call a, a human media movement, so whereby we are not just interacting with people on text-based social media posts, we are interacting with them live in real time being, via living, breathing video. So we call that human media. Um, and via Glass, you were able to open up a Hangout or a group video chat room on Glass. So as you're walking through the airport or maybe you're doing the dishes or something like that, you have other people directly in your field of vision that that you're able to communicate face to face with. So I think that will be really key to, to fan the flames of the human media movement. You know, the fact that um, we have the ability now to interact with each other via video face to face. So I'm geeked out about that um, as a glass explorer, that, that unique combination of hangouts and where can I take people to see that they would not otherwise been able to physically see. All right, so we got um uh, four uh, glass explorers before you, and uh, they all told us uh, experiences uh, for your, uh, their jobs, for their professional life. You're saying that uh, glass will improve the way uh, reporters and journalists will uh, will share the information. If I if I get it, you you also say that uh, glass will improve uh, our way of uh, everyday of life everyday. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. There are a variety of features on Glass. You can not only share photos and videos and take them quickly, but you have um, GPS. Everything that you can do, most everything you can do on your smartphone, you can do um, via Glass. Although this is a very early edition. I call it the Model T, as in a car. It's the Model T of wearable computers. It doesn't yet have windshield wipers or heated seats or, or anything like that. It's still evolving. Um, so, and the apps are evolving. So we have to wait into until it becomes more. Um, advanced to where it can totally replace our smartphone. Will it do that one day? Perhaps. We can do video calls, we can do phone calls, so so a lot of the things we can do you know with our head in you know the phone we have the ability to do with our head up in conversation. Glass is worn high on the brow so if you look at it, it um, you know my eyes I'm able to see you face to face in a conversation and the glass is not impeding that um, but if I need it I just have the ability to look up at my face and and then make it make a few clicks. Uh, what does this do? This allows people who capture um, photos and videos to capture those memories without having to look through a viewfinder, right? How many you know weddings or or anything like that that you have held up a smartphone and you know documented that event by looking through the viewfinder? Um, I was at a wedding recently and I was able to capture some. Um, poignant images with my own eyes without having it obstruct in my vision. So that's another another key for glass. Um, obviously there are a lot of unique apps out there, not just from the ability to share to Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus, but there's an app called Full Screen Beam that allows you to automatically upload to YouTube that we here in the United States are are using a lot. So definitely for your career, um, for your home life, the ability to capture high quality images directly from your point of view without looking at it through a, a viewfinder is is a huge improvement um, whereas otherwise we would have our heads um, buried buried in a smartphone. Uh, Kyle Samani, uh, founder of pristine.io, uh, told us Glass was a um, was a real uh, great product, but he had uh, doubts on uh, the general use a consumer would have with it. Um, he so he he told us that wearing glass uh, all day long had a, uh, um, an effective cost. That it was to have a device on your face, uh, and glass isn't. Um, isn't such a big thing, isn't such useful, uh, enough useful to, to have to wear it uh, all day long. Mm -hmm. you, are you wearing uh, glass all day long? I don't wear it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no. The battery life, as you may know, um, is not there yet. Uh, you have to recharge glass after, after a few hours. I wear it primarily when I'm on the go. So when I want the ability to capture in images quickly and take photos in real time, when I do hangouts on the go, I definitely wear glass because it allows me uh, to have my hands free to do other things when I'm just talking with people or, or having a hands free phone call, which is huge. Glass is not for, for, for everyone, obviously, right? Um, there are very unique uses for it. And for instance, you know, if I think of my mom, um, my mom would not necessarily have a use for glass, um, although taking point of view pictures I think would be appealing to her. Um, the way the apps are now, it would be difficult for her to navigate um, this device because it's it's an early prototype, right? Uh, prototypes down the line uh, and, and future uh, generations of this device will perhaps make it easier to join a Wi-Fi network or to add a Wi-Fi network or to connect to Bluetooth or, or some of those things. So glass isn't for everybody. Um, I don't wear it 20 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but I do find it highly useful um, in my pr profession, which is capturing photos and, and videos and, and also um, with this volunteer effort that we have in order to provide these veterans uh, a real-time view of their memorial. What is Glass is doing for medicine is amazing. Um, there are Glass apps out there that people are working on that allows a nurse to look at someone's um, arm okay, and see where the veins are in order to put their um, IV or in order to give them an injection or draw blood or something like that. I mean, can you imagine that for medicine? Um, there's another doctor named Dr. Raphael Grossman who is using it for surgery as well to give people yeah. a point of view. We got him on an interview yeah. uh, um, last night. Uh, 
of, of his surgery. Uh, you know, Glass for Journalism, um, we are using it here at the Veteran Gen Network for content creation um, in order to, you know, provide those images for veterans and on stories we do, providing a unique, unique point of view. For education, I mean, name a, for construction, the ability to pull up blueprints um, and have them directly in your field of vision hands-free. You know, name a profession and there might be a, um, a, a use for Glass. Um, how will it be used in the future? We don't know. It all depends on what the, the smart developers out there come up with as far as the apps that further enhance, enhance the device. But this is very, very early in the stage. It would be difficult to judge what the future is going to be without really knowing the future potential of this Model T of wearable computers. So you're saying that uh, you're, you're confirming, confirming what uh, uh, Mr. Samani told, you, told us that glass has a really is really useful in your professional life, but uh, not uh, not at all uh, in your in your everyday life. Uh, no, it is uh, useful in my everyday life and my personal life is too. My both my my career life and my home life as well. Um, I, I use it all the time. But wearing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, the battery life isn't conducive to that, um, and I don't really see a need to sleep in it or shower in it, um, like some of my, my counterparts have. Um, but yes, I definitely see a big use for glass in my career and in my home life as well. OK, great. The, this is a different point of view, and uh, I like it. <laughs> Then, and um, also, also, too, you yeah. know, an, another point of view, what glass in the future will evolve to be, could evolve to be, is a broadcast tower for your face. Okay, and, and let me explain that. Um, Hangouts have a, a component called Hangouts on Air. So right now we are, we are in a, a Hangout on Air. It's streaming live on YouTube. Okay, Glass is currently not supported for Hangout on Air, so you can't open up or join a live streaming Hangout via Glass yet. Okay, when that feature comes about and you have Hangout on Air for mobile, you have the ability for a, a reporter to walk through a breaking news situation and not just live tweet still pictures um, or even video, but to stream live hands-free from their face. Okay, they're walking through a riot. They're walking through a parade. Um, they have, are at some other event where they want to not only interact with their audience live in real time and not be asynchronous like a text-based tweet, but they want to interact with them live in real time. So when Hangouts on Air are supported for Glass, you will see more and more people broadcasting from their face. This is this is a broadcast tower, right? Um, because you have the ability to, to, to reach a larger audience with that. Um, you do have the ability to be a private Hangout publicly via Glass, and the way we get around it now, because we don't have Hangout on Air for Glass, um, we have someone else join that Hangout via Glass, and then they stream their screen and highlight the, the, the Glass My Thumbnail full screen, and then others outside of that Hangout are able to see that Glass Hangout. So that's just one way that people are, are getting around that limitation. But people are broadcasting. You know, we, we, we do broadcasts um, via glass, and we did in Washington, D.C. when we were there showing, showing those veterans their World War II memorial. So, do, do, saying that, would you say that uh, glass isn't a mass product? Uh, Google, does Google want to, to spread it across the world or just, uh, just release it to professionals? You know, I'm not sure. You know what their intentions. That would be a good question um, for Google. I don't. I don't work for Google, um, but I can tell you that they are opening up invitations to more and more individuals. So we had the first group of, of um, a few thousand who were Glass explorers who got Glass, and now what's happening is they are inviting Glass explorers to invite their friends to get glass. And so that's how it's kind of manifesting um, outward. So slowly but surely, more and more individuals are, are getting it and having the ability to, to beta it and give feedback to Google. And then who knows when it will, will be, be public. Will it be next year? Will it be the year after that? But when that time comes, thousands of people will have, the, have had the opportunity to test drive this early version and make suggestions for the future. And I can tell you from everyone who's tried it, everyone who's put it on, their first reaction is, wow. You know, I mean, that literally, they're, wow, awesome, I, this is so wild. You know, I have my computer like, like right there. Um, so 
I can't imagine that not translating into somebody not wanting to purchase the, the, the device um, to, to try it. So my experience has, has been very positive with it, um, although there are opportunities for improvement, obviously with battery life, um, some of the sharing capabilities, it doesn't all, you don't always get notifications about Google Plus, Google Plus notifications. Um, Hangout invites are a little bit wonky on glass, but all of those things, all those uh, little ripples that I'm sure that will be ironed out in the future. Okay, thanks. Um, talking, let's talk about uh, the If I Had Glass program. You applied saying you would use glass to show World War II veterans their memorials before they pass away. Mm -hmm. Why is glass helpful for that? Mm -hmm. It's helpful for that because it allows you to provide that veteran a live, interactive, first-person point of view of their memorial. Okay, I can walk up to the memorial, I can touch the granite relief panels, and they can see the texture, and they can see me touching it, and it's almost like they are transported in my body and are seeing exactly what I am seeing in, in real time. Uh, reporters and content creators are supposed to be the eyes and ears of the public, and that's essentially what, what Glass allows you to do. It allows you to show a group of individuals exactly what you're seeing. Um, not only that, but via Hangout, via Glass client combined with Hangout, they have the opportunity to ask questions in real time. So they have the opportunity to say, Sarah, would you walk closer to that fountain? What does that inscription say over there? Can you go over there? And I, I can go over there and I can read it for them. I can point to it. I say, is this the one that you're, that you're talking about? Um, again, it's that, that direct point of view that for an individual who really wants to simulate the experience of being there, it's, it's unique. And would you since uh, would you would you say that since you have glass, uh, it fulfilled your dreams? It fulfilled my dreams. I would say I would say that it fulfilled my expectations of what I wanted in a hands-free device. Are there other items on this device that I would like to see? Or, or could see as far as content creators in the future? Absolutely. Battery life, um, perhaps a teleprompter, a volume control. Um, when we, we use glass in a live broadcast, if someone mentions me during the segment, my glass goes off, right? And there's no way to mute those notifications or mute those volume settings. So in future devices, I'm sure that, that will come about. Um, but definitely it's met my expectations, and I'm anxious to see what the developers come up with that will make, you know, this Model T move from a Model T vehicle to a Porsche. And um, we saw many explorers saying that uh, there were creepy, creepy looks at them when they were wearing glass in the street, etc. Uh, would, uh, did you experiment uh, uh, something like that? Yeah, um, I wouldn't say they're creepy, it's curiosity, and the biggest question when you pass people, you know, I was at, at a park, um, you know, not, not too long ago, and walking through it, and there were whispers, and you, you could hear what they were saying, they were saying, I think that's Google Glass, and then they get up enough nerve to come up and ask you, and, and natural curiosity, right? Um, I only went to one small town in Missouri where they were asking about it, and wasn't really sure um, at, at first what it was. But most everybody here in the Midwest and the Silicon Prairie um, knows what, what glass is, and they're curious about it. They want to try it on. Um, they want to test drive it. They want to see, see what it's like, and you know, they want to put it on and, and see the future, as they say. We like to see the future, too. <laughs> but, well, uh, here, I'll, I'll flip it around. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great. It would be really great. And you can put it on your face. There you go. <laughs> There you go. I would like right? to pass through through the screen, but uh, I know it's magical. We need, <laughs> yeah. we need a, a teleportation hangout app or something, right? Yeah, it would be great because uh, here in France uh, we have four explorers, and uh, it's really hard to to reach them, and uh, and maybe we can uh, have glass in a uh, in a short time. We there you go. Dream. There you go, and you can sh maybe share with that hashtag, and maybe they'll do a France version of "If I Had Glass." This would be this would be cool. This would be really cool. Um, let's talk about glass in general. Mm -hmm. We're only in a testing version with a uh, thousand explorers around the world. How do you think uh, glass will enter the full market? Um, how soon, you mean? Um, 
how soon, maybe, and uh, how it will uh, impact uh, society will be mm. as uh, as heavy as uh, the iPhone release or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have the ability to speculate on that as far as when it would be released. And, and do I think that it would be as big of a clamor as, for instance, the iPhone release? Um, I think it, it, it would. Um, just judging by the reaction of the people who've, who've I've let try it on, and, you know, we're probably approaching, you know, a couple hundred people just in the last couple months that I've had it who've tried it on and like I said almost all of their reactions except for some people who had eyesight issues and weren't actually able to see through the device um, but all of their reaction has been you know this is awesome this is the future wow the, this is really neat so just judging from that reaction you know I can't yeah. imagine that translating into a clamor of people wanting to buy it I mean right now there's all already um, lots of individuals who you know wish they had they had it um, and but the the demand right there just just isn't isn't there and I think what will determine a lot whether or not how popular this device is as well will regard will be the individual price point right if it comes out as the same price point three hundred to five hundred dollars um, about the price of a regular smartphone then I think you would see a lot of people bite um, at that price if it comes out more than that um, obviously it's supply and, and demand not a lot of individuals um, are going to want to bite if it's more expensive than a, than a regular smartphone and would you say um, glass US will... dollars that is yeah US dollars yeah it's less in our country <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you say um, glass will have a real impact on our society in the in the industry or in uh, other, other domains mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You will have the ability to broadcast live, hands-free from your face. You'll have the ability to interact with people live and real-time and show them exactly what you're seeing hands-free. You'll have the ability to more quickly share to your social platforms. You'll have the ability to capture images without looking through a viewfinder. Um, those are just a few of the things that, that Glass enables you to do, that a smartphone isn't as easy or as quickly to do. And um, glass is a bit scary. Uh, we we see that uh, through government's uh, actions, uh, everything. Uh, it's mainly because of a lack of privacy, or what it uh, what it looks like. Uh, what is your opinion on that? Mm -hmm. Mainly from a lack of understanding. A lot of people think just because you have glass on your face that you're recording. Right? They think that you're re recording if you, if you have it on. Uh, there is an indication that allows you to see whether or not you're recording, and it's a glow. It's like a purple glow that happens on on the crystal, and you can tell whether or not someone's recording because it's it's lit up in that area. Um, I think once more people try it, and that fear of the unknown has reduced, they'll understand that yes, there is the ability to see when someone is recording, and that just because someone has glass on their face doesn't necessarily mean that they're capturing a photo or a video. It's just like smartphones, everyone had to get used to people having them up to their ear or people, you know, being in them 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 like this or even capturing photos and videos um, from a mobile device without a big camera where people were able to say, "Oh, absolutely, you know, they are they are shooting." Um, as journalists and content creators, you know, we have rules for all other kinds of broadcast equipment. So for glass, if we're smart, we'll come up with those rules now and not wait for a legal case to, to force it. There are responsible uses of every other kind of broadcast equipment and content capturing, including your smartphone. So you just have to apply the proper rules to them, it's including like glass. Every, it's like uh, in every, every device, in fact, uh, we we would say that uh, that glass isn't uh, much different than uh, than uh, smartphones at uh, at that time. Uh, yeah. 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 I would I would agree with that um, because you have the ability to capture photos and videos um, with your smartphone. Now people had the ability to see if you were capturing more because you actually had to hold something up. Um, hands free makes it a little bit. Um, less visible and you know not only um, you know broadcasters have to come up with 
answer new questions about how do you denote to the public that you are broadcasting. Uh, for instance, Robert Scoble, I was watching him interview Trey Radcliffe. Radcliffe at an event at Google I.O. and Robert was interviewing him via glass but there was a crowd around him trying to talk and interact with Trey because they didn't know that um, Scoble was broadcasting so what he had to do was outstretch his arms in a way and, and widen his stands as if to say I am broadcasting here you know because otherwise there's no other way to denote to the public and they were trying to interact with with Trey so you know the future of, of glass with with content creators or, or glass broadcasters um, you might have to develop a different stance when it comes to reporting uh, whether that be you know a, a sign on your back or you know a flag you put up or, or whatever just changing your stance to denote to individuals hey I'm conducting a private interview here um, you know the respectful boundaries um, to stay away until after it's over but it comes up with new questions all questions that we have to have to answer um, what who, what would be the, the two main misunderstandings uh, glass uh, about glass mm -hmm. probably that you're constantly recording okay um, probably that it doesn't do anything different than your smartphone which is incorrect. It allows you to do things more quickly. It gives your perspective a point of view for the camera that your smartphone doesn't have. And it allows you to do hangouts that are hands-free. Um, those would probably be, be the, the, the two ones. People don't understand that you're not constantly recording with glass. Or also they, they don't understand that it's not voice controlled. I very rarely use the voice control for glass. I use the temple tap. Um, so that's how I awaken it, um, and, and that's how I take a picture, you know, and that's why, how I scroll through and select things at the temple tap. You don't have to constantly say, okay, glass, in order to control it. I mean, there are varieties of ways to control it, and by voice is, is just one, one way. I was talking with an explorer not too long ago, and he was talking about, you know, it's you know, kind of hard when you have to control it in, you know, situations that are quiet, and I'm like, well, you just you have to do this. You don't have to talk the whole time. You know you control control it. The two different um, ways that you control it are with a temple click, right? Just on this side okay. uh, portion um, right here. So it's a temple click or a finger swipe. So those are the two actions. And then the third one is a swipe down. So when you escape out of a computer screen, just how you click that X button, this is the version of clicking out of of a computer screen on glass. Um, this is the way of, of scrolling through just like you would on a mouse, that finger swipe, and then temple taps are just like the click of a mouse when you want to select things. So if you can master those three finger gestures, you've pretty much mas mastered glass. We, we saw uh, other interviews of, uh, of you, like uh, the one with uh, Robert Scoble uh, the other day, and uh, we saw that you connected glass to a screen and you, sh you could uh, broadcast uh, what, you, what you saw uh, mm -hmm. through it. Yeah, absolutely, and I would do that for you right now. However, I'm not connected to this Wi-Fi network um, right now where I am, so that would take me a while to do, and I don't think you probably want to wait for me to do, do that, but you have the ability via glass. Um, you can do what's called a screencast on your phone. So everything that I am seeing on glass, I have the ability to also see um, on my phone, and it's helpful when you're teaching people how to work it because you can – you or, or they have it on and you're able to see what they can see. Um, so that's helpful as well. Yes, you do have the ability to to project that image on your smartphone. Okay, we are now to the end. Uh, what advice would you give to glass lovers like us mm -hmm. uh, who can't have glass yet so they can get one? Yeah, I would encourage you to, you know, share your stories via If I Had Glass. Who knows how many people with Project Glass might might read those in other countries. I imagine that, you know, I don't know when Glass will be a, a available over there, but if you have a specific use case, I'd definitely um, uh, publicize it now because who knows how they're they are going to roll it out. Um, if you do get Glass, I would encourage you to definitely check out the Hangout integration, open Hangouts on Glass, um, explore the human media movement, interact with people face to face, and that's what this device really is all about, um, is, is hands-free Hangouts and, and the ability to interact with those individuals, um, not in a smartphone or not tethered, tethered to your computer, but to be able to go about your day and then have those, those 
those video phone calls. So once you get Glass, I would encourage you to use it for a phenomenally good, charitable, <laughs> worthy cause. Um, also use Hangouts and also enjoy more quickly sharing to all of your social platforms via a few clicks as opposed to a bunch, a bunch of clicks in there. Uh, here goes the last question. In one word, uh, what does Google Glass mean for you? Human media. Human, human media. Means human. We are more human because we have the ability to see directly from their point of view. It, uh, it's not the, the point of view of many because uh, uh, you look like a cyborg, it's everything. Uh, uh, no, you. I can handle I can hand, handle the jokes. I mean, it's like anything else. Once every, you know, more and more people have this on there, it won't be as as unique to be talking with someone. It'll just be like you're holding holding a, a smartphone. And who knows, you know, what the, you know, will this always look like this? It might not. It might be clicked on your your lapel. It might not even have this, you know, rail. Who knows? In the future, it might just be clipped on your ear right here, like a, a jawbone or a Bluetooth device. I mean, we don't know what the what the future product. Um, will will look like, but um, in a word, I would say human. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Sarah Hill, for having been with us in this interview. See you soon, everyone, for the Glass Story interviews, and uh, don't forget to check out our Twitter, uh, Glass Stories, our Facebook at uh, facebook.com/gglassstories, and the page Glass Stories on Google Plus. And uh, thank you, thanks for watching, and thanks Sarah Hill for for your your patience. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks for having me, and good luck in your future endeavors. And I'll give you a hangout high five. This is what we call a hangout <laughs> high five. Can you give me thank a high you. five? There you go. All right, sounds good. It's great to meet you guys. Hi again, guys. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, uh, be sure to leave us a comment. And don't forget you can watch the next Explorers interview clicking right here or the previous clicking right there. Also, don't forget to check out the website glassstories.com for more exciting stuff about what Google Glass is. Bye! Bye bye!